Okay, so now we have our tic-tac-toe grid. Now let's chart to add. Okay, so now we have our tic-tac-toe grid. We can start to add some jQuery interactions here to make it come to life. Uh, what we're going to do is start off with just two colors for each player. So we'll do like blue and red. And then once we get the game working, we can actually go in and replace the colors with X's and O's. Um, but for right now, what we're going to do is add the basic functionality, make sure we know which player's turn it is, and allow them to select each square. So as I mentioned in the last video, we have these um, square classes that we can use, and that's a pretty good way for us to um, start off with adding a click event for each of these squares. We won't have to worry about any fancy click handlers here because these squares exist on the page when we initiate our JavaScript. Uh, in our to-do list app that we built previously, we had to really think about how to add event handlers for things that didn't ex yet exist on the page. Um, in this case, that's not going to be an issue. So let's go ahead and open up our tic-tac.js. Um, we've already loaded that up on the page here. And what we're going to do, since we're going to be using jQuery, we want to make sure that all of the elements are loaded on the page before we start to do anything. So I'm going to do document.ready. This is going to wait for the page to be fully loaded before we run any of our code. And what we want to do here is uh, create a click event on that square class. And from there, then we can basically run all of our logic to see, is it a square that someone has already clicked in? So if you've added an X, you shouldn't be able to add an O there. Uh, if you've added an X there, you shouldn't be able to add another X there, for instance. Um, and so the, what we'll go ahead and do is just start off with that click event and we're going to do dot square dot on click function and let's go ahead and this is an event so in here we're going to be checking to see how we want to play our game so let's go ahead and just say add symbol here and let's refresh our page just to make sure things are working properly. And that works. I'm going to add another style to this just so that we know that we can click on these. So you can do cursor pointer on the square class. And what we'll end up with is a nice little hand that shows the user that they can click on things. So again, we'll click. We get to see that our event handler is working properly in all of the squares. So because they all have the exact same uh, class, using our this variable is going to be very important. So the um, square that was selected is going to be equal to dollar sign this. And if we were to output this to the screen, this would be the actual HTML element that we pressed on. This is really important because they don't have individual IDs or any way for us to distinguish which one was clicked on. So now that we have the square that has been clicked on, what we're going to end up doing is coming in and adding and removing uh, different classes. So if a player has selected this one and it's player 1 as an X, we can add the uh, class of X. And then if the next one is a player of O, we can add O as a class. And so what we're going to want to do is we want to check to see if the player has already added one of these classes to it. So let's go ahead and see how we might do that. Um, jQuery has a method called has class. So we can do square selected dot has class. And we want to check to see if it is either X or O. So square selected dot has class O. And if you remember, these two pipes here stand for or. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a conditional. So we'll do if square selected dot has class X or O, then that means that someone's already clicked on this and we shouldn't allow anything to happen. So in this case, we can say console.log, or let's do an alert just so that we can show the user. Um, this square has already been selected. 
please select another. So that will tell the user that that square is not valid. So pretty easy way to figure that out. Uh, and we can clean this up a little bit in a, a little bit later. So here is where we're going to add all the rest of our logic. And what we need to be able to do is know which player is currently uh, playing. And so I'm actually going to come up here and create a variable called player. And we're going to start with one and we're going to change it to two whenever uh, we go back and forth. So it'll go back and forth between one and two. So what we can do down here is that they've clicked on the square and we've determined whether or not it already has an element in there, either X or O. And in this case, this else is going to be if it's a free square. So nothing has been added to any of these. So we can actually add the player's class to that square. And in this case, let's go ahead and say that player one is X and player two is O. And so we can say if player equals one, and else, let's say, if we can actually just do an else, we don't need to check for player two because it's the only other player that will exist. But we can do square selected dot add class. And so if it's player one, we're going to do X. And if it's player two, we're going to do O. So at this point, um, we're going to add more logic down here to see if the player has won uh, and so forth. But let's go ahead and add um, blue and red backgrounds for each of these classes. Right now, if we refresh this, we can actually see that we have our alert. Let me get rid of that real quick. Add symbol here. So now if we click, you'll see down below that X has been added. If we click into this next one, it's actually going to see that X is also selected. We click this one, also X is selected. So the issue that we have to fix here is that as the player plays, we need to go and hand it back to player two. So right now, if player one equals one, we're going to set this class to player, um, set it to X, and then we're going to set player equal to two. And when the person who's playing O goes, we're going to set it equal to one. So now, it's going to bounce back and forth between the two players. So X, and now we have O, and now we have X. X, O, X. So now let's go ahead and add a style to these. Let's go into our CSS, and we're going to add X. Let's just do a background color of red, and dot O. Give that a background color of blue. And now if we refresh our page, you'll see that the player X is going to be red and player O will be blue. So if we try to win here, you'll see that this blue one should have won. So what we need to do is we need to add some code to check to see if this player has won. Um, we already have the ability to check to see if someone has already selected a square. So very little code was required to do that and we can't change the player's square without um, having them select an empty one. So we, it, right now it lets you run all the way through. We need to check to see did you win or not. So if you refresh, everything gets reset. Okay, so right now we have gone ahead and added our class and we've set our player now to two. What we want to do in between these two, before we send the player off, is that we want to check to see if the player has won or not. We only want to change to the next player if they haven't won. So what I'm going to do for this is actually create a function, um, check if player won. And we're actually going to go ahead and uh, let's try passing in player. So what I'm going to do is create a new function called check if player one, 
And what I want to check is which symbol won. So we know that player 1 is x and player 2 is o. So what we're going to do is pass in our symbol. So let's go ahead and do symbol. And we can come in here and say var. Ah, we actually don't have to do that. We'll just keep that as it is for right now. Um, so check if player 1. And what we want to do here, um, this is an not the most elegant way and I would love to see what kinds of options you come up with to make this better but what we're gonna do is actually do a whole bunch of ifs to check to see how uh, and if the player won so the ways that you can win are you know either going all the way across in each three rows going down in each column or by doing either diagonal so that gives us three six, seven, eight different options. So what we're gonna do is actually create a really large if check here. And the issue that we have to check on is we wanna check for this symbol, which we can do with has class, but we need to check three distinct squares. And the way that I'm gonna do this is actually name each of these squares um, with a class. And this will allow us to check dot sq1, dot sq2, and dot sq3 to see if they have done x's all the way across the top. We can keep going and do sk, sq4, sq5, and sq6, sq7, sq8, and sq9. So now we have the ability to target each one of these individual squares. So if we come back into our JavaScript, we know again that we have access to dollar sign $sq1, and that will be the very first square, dot has class, and the symbol that is here is going to be either uh, ex or o. And so what we're going to do with that information is um, go ahead and say symbol, because that's going to get passed into us and we're going to say if this first square has this symbol and the next square has that symbol and the next square has that symbol then we can say that the player has won. So again not very elegant it's going to take a whole lot of if statements here but we can just write all these out. So again we're going to have if square 1, 2, and 3 and then we're going to do 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, and uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we're going to do 1, 4, 7, and 2, 5, 8, and then 3, 6, 9. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to grab the inside of this if statement. And so you're going to do if, else if, else if, and so forth. So let's do two. So we did one, two, three, so let's do four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. And what's going to happen inside of each of these is that we're going to return true if that happens. So if any of these happen, then a player has won. Um, however, at the very, very end here, we're going to end up with an else and the else will only fire if none of these other conditions are met, we're going to return false. And that's going to be, the check's going to fire every single time somebody checks a square, and if they haven't won, then they're going to get back false. If they have won, then we'll have true, and then we can display to the user that congratulations, they have won. So right now we've only checked the horizontal rows, so we also need to check for the vertical rows. So let's go ahead and do else if. And so I just copied and pasted the top three. And so now I need to go in and do square one, square four, and square seven. So again, that's going to be the three going down the squares. So now we'll do two, five, and eight. And then we'll have three, six, and nine. And then we need to add two more. Let's fix our else down here. 
for our two diagonals. So now we have an else if, and that's going to be square 1, square 5, and square 9 for the first diagonal that goes this way. And then our next diagonal is going to be square 3, square 5, and square 7. So, so our, we got square 3, square 5, and square 7. And now we have this very large if-else st structure that we can use to check to see if a player has won. So again, we don't want to switch players unless the player has not won. So inside of here we can actually say if, check if player won, and this is going to return either true or false. So you can read this as if true, then they won, if false, then they didn't win. So we're going to go ahead and say that if they won, we're going to do something to congratulate the user. If they didn't win, we're going to switch the player. Okay, so uh, we can go ahead and say if this player has won, alert player, we can do congrats, player, and then we know what player we're currently on, so we can do plus player, which will output the player number, has won. And I've noticed that we just missed something here. So check if player one requires us to pass in the symbol that that player is using. So we're going to pass in EX. And you'll see here that EX is getting a little bit repetitive. There's some things here that we can work on to improve a little bit later. Uh, we'll do this in the next video. So now if they won, we're going to alert them and we don't pass it on to player two. However, if they haven't won, we're going to pass it on to player two and the game continues. So we need to do this exact same thing down below. So we're going to go ahead and replace our code here and say player equals 1. And we're going to change the x to an O. And now you'll see again we have some very repetitive code here that can be optimized a little bit. But for right now let's just make sure that this all works. So if player 2 plays they're going to add the class of O. We're going to see if that player has won with the O's. And if they have let them know that they won and if not then pass on to player one. So now let's pop back into our tic-tac-toe game and try it out. So we'll do an X, an O, there's another X, we'll do an O, another X, and an O. Congrats player two, which was our O's, or in this case blue, has won. So that is how to build the basic logic of tic-tac-toe. In the next video, we're going to clean this up a little bit, um, create a couple more functions that will make it a little bit cleaner, uh, as well as add our X's and O's.